After the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression started a whole new, worse economic decade. It put an end to the excesses of the flapper age and made life hard for people all over the world. During the Great Depression, there were big changes in how people lived, how society worked, and how the economy worked. During the Great Depression, when many people were out of work and had to fight every day to stay alive, the roles of men and women in society changed quickly and became more complicated. Families got smaller because it was hard to feed so many people, but men and women still found ways to be sexual and use up their energy. At the same time, liberal views on the problem, which had grown during the 1920s, went backwards during the 1930s, hurting anyone who didn't follow the traditional rules. Bedroom relations in the 1930s America both changed and held on to old ways as people tried to keep control of their lives in a time when control seemed impossible. Lesbians had their own subculture with its own lingo. During the Great Depression, it was dangerous and often lonely to be out as a lesbian. Women who seemed too interested in sports or not interested enough in men were seen as odd. Women who chose to be lesbians in public were seen as a threat to men, especially at a time when masculinity was in danger. For example, when men couldn't provide for their families, the idea of masculinity took a big blow. Because of this, many lesbians married guys to feel safe and secure and to avoid being judged by society. There were, however, hidden ways for a lesbian couple to show that they were living a gay life behind closed doors. In the life meant that you thought of yourself as a woman. Some lesbians moved around a lot, and in the end, they had more options than lesbians who lived in one place. Couples of the same gender could say they traveled together for safety and company without having to explain their relationships. It was also hard to find a woman to be in a relationship with. Women met at universities or in jails, but it was hard and lonely to live as a couple in the open. Lillian Faderman tells a story in her book about lesbianism in the 20th century about a couple in Texas who didn't know there were other lesbians for more than 20 years. Nudism spread throughout the U.S. As people's ideas about sexuality and morality changed in the U.S. in the early 1930s, nudism became more and more common. As the naturalism movement, nudism took off in the first decades of the 20th century. It was already popular in Europe. During the Great Depression, people were less worried about showing skin, which helped nudists who had tried to do so but failed in the 1920s, when the movement still faced resistance. Even though there have been attempts to ban nudism in big cities like New York and Chicago, some people have said that nudist spaces should be made. In 1933, a group of naked people bought land in northern Indiana and opened the Lake of the Woods Club as a getaway. People from all over the country continued to read about and pay attention to the annual international nude conferences. Birth control was a necessity. During the Great Depression, unemployment and lack of money made it hard for families to get by, so having a lot of kids wasn't the best idea. Couples worked hard to avoid getting pregnant and having kids, so birth control became important. During the first two decades of the 20th century, the fight over birth control put the Comstock Act of 1873 at the center of political and social talks. The act was used to punish people who supported birth control, but during the Great Depression, many states passed laws that made it easier for women to get birth control. Many women were glad to get information and methods about birth control. Condoms for men were popular, but there was a push for women to have control over their own reproductive choices. Diaphragms and female condoms gave women the power to choose how many children they wanted to have. The first interuterine devices and later the birth control pill changed the way people got pregnant. In the 1930s, the number of children a woman could have dropped from more than three to as few as two. Women found safety and decent money in ringer houses. Even though money was tight and people worried about sexually transmitted diseases, prostitution was still a good way to make money. In the 1930s, women could work on their own or in someone's home as a ringer. In order to work as a ringer, women had to get checked for diseases and get a certificate of health which both madams and customers would want to see. 10 to 15 people would hire a ringer every day. Most ringer houses were linked together, and the women would register at a main house. Girls who were on their own had to take care of themselves and were much more likely to get in trouble. During the Great Depression, 
prostitution was a sign of a change in power because the madams and crime bosses who hired the girls got more and more control over them. Same gender relations were targeted and viewed as a disease. In the 1920s, being gay was still against the law, but gay men could live quietly in places like Chicago and San Francisco. During the Great Depression, the tide went back the other way, and gay people were soon seen as a threat to the economy and to men's sense of themselves as a whole. In 1932, gay bars, drag shows, and other pansy parlors in Chicago that were popular were all shut down. More and more, same-gender relationships were seen as a mental sickness, just like voyeurism and child abuse. It was also made a crime on purpose. In New York, for example, cops went undercover in gay bars by dressing up and asking for relationships. This tricked gay men into committing a crime. On the other hand, when the Third Reich took power in Germany in 1933, gay men were sent to prison camps right away. Shirtless, manly men were highly visible. The Civilian Conservation Corps was one of the many government projects that were part of FDR's New Deal. The image of a shirtless man with a sledgehammer or shovel is linked to this program. Men got paid to work the land, made friends, and in their own way, questioned ideas about morality and showing skin. In propaganda from the 1930s, the government also tried to show men as busy and strong. They did this because they knew that unemployment had hurt men's minds as a whole. Art and writing about men during the New Deal tried to fix the way men were seen. Around the corner there was a bare-chested man, or at least a picture of a strong, tough man. This meant that there were lots of chances to see these men. John McParkland says that women also bared their skin, first on the beach and then gradually on the streets and even at social occasions. Masculinity took a hit when men couldn't be the primary breadwinners anymore. Men were used to being the breadwinners, so when they lost their jobs, it was a big blow to their sense of manhood and self-respect. Men wanted to work, but they didn't want to do what they thought of as women's work, because they thought it was beneath them. As a result, women and their jobs at home became more important to the family as a whole. Men of all ages and backgrounds found ways to deal with their anger, such as through men's clubs and sports events. But the social stigma stayed. During the Great Depression, while men looked for work on the streets, women took care of the home and family. Many people said that no housewife lost her job during that time. Music, dance, and sport became substitutes for pleasure. During the 1930s, people danced the swing and the jitterbug to meet their physical and carnal needs and wants. Dancing was a funny, breathless kind of relationship that made people out of breath from dance, not emotion. Both dance and music were improvised and interacted with each other in ways that showed how morals were changing and how men and women interacted with each other. During the Great Depression, sports events gave people another way to have fun and pass the time. As a way to flee their lives, men and women listened to baseball games on the radio, went to boxing matches, and got more into football. Living together, as opposed to marriage, became more common. Because the economy was unstable at the time, people's thoughts and ideals about marriage and the family changed. Along with more people using birth control, many young couples decided that marriage, which is a way to build a family and a career, wasn't right for them. So they lived together even though it wasn't allowed. There were a lot of, we'll get married later, but let's not wait romances. One newspaper from the time said, soon the whole thing looked like a square dance. The story says that this happened a lot in Washington, D.C., because there were a lot of single women who worked there at the time. Hollywood had a lot to say about sexuality. During the 1930s, movies about the Great Depression said important things. Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs showed two kinds of women. The evil witch queen with all the power tries to kill the pure porcelain-skinned princess, who can only be saved by a man's kiss. From the point of view of guys, the movie tried to put gender-based power dynamics back where they belong. On the other hand, slapstick comedies showed Laurel and Hardy as well-meaning men in a strong relationship, even though their speech and actions were often silly. They also made a big deal about the war between the sexes. We hope you liked this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about civilization or time period we should talk about. Also watch another video here.